Hello and welcome Universe Mode, this is ECW, this is the best show of the week, we have made it and it is on time for you as well. We are here from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where we will witness the penultimate match for Diamond Dallas Page on the ECW roster. Yes, I know, it's such a lovely sentence to say, I'm going to say it again. The penultimate match for Diamond Dallas Page on the ECW roster. That is exactly what I mean. And uh, yes, tonight it will be the four horsemen who will be going up against each other, up against the, the Diamond Dallas Page and Seth Rollins in the Beat the Clock Challenge here tonight on, well for Diamond Dallas Page's opponent it will be none other than Y2J Chris Jericho, two somewhat veteran, well Jericho certainly the veteran taking on DDP, this one should be a very interesting one and that will be kicking off the show here tonight. And then for our main event, it's going to be a big one. Roddy Strong of the Four Horsemen. He had a shot at DDP a few weeks ago and couldn't get it done. Can he get the job done here tonight against Seth Rollins, who already has fall number one in his, uh, well, the first match of the three stages of hell in his uh, grasp. And all he's got to do is just admit what match he wants. And you know what? That's how we're going to start things off on ECW. Before we get to the Jericho DDP match, up now, we will hear from Seth Rollins. And here he is right now, the architect and the soon-to-be three-time ECW champion once SummerSlam comes to an end. Praise be Seth Rollins. Praise be to you. Rollins last week beat Diamond Dallas Page's time by about two minutes to secure the first fall. His win over AJ Styles far better than uh, DDP's victory over Shawn Michaels. So that being said, Seth Rollins just letting the crowd of Baton Rouge uh, let them all know. Let them remind everyone that he is the one who picked up the win last week. He is the better of the two. We all know that and he showed it last week. But right now, we wait to know what is the first fall in this match. Ah. Ah. Thank you, Rollins. There you go. The news has been broken to us and that is a perfect way of putting it as well. We all know Rollins is the best wrestler in the world. So why not kick things off? Why not kick off the first fall with a basic, bog-standard, one-on-one match? And Rollins has little more to say, it seems. Doesn't want to talk about DDP anymore. Doesn't want to talk about Ronnie Strong later on tonight. He just wants to talk about the first fall. Rollins may have his mind too intent on this main event here tonight. But you know what? That'll settle it. A one-on-one -on -one match is how the first fall will be decided in our three stages of hell. And I know what some people are going to do. Some people are going to complain. Some people are going to say, Oh, Seth Rollins picking a singles match. What a boring talent. You know, he has every match at his disposal and he picks a one-on-one a -on -one match. Well, no, it, it's just to reiterate the point that, we have, that I have said for many months and that has been true. Rollins is the best wrestler in the world. Seth, there is no one better and there never will be anyone better than Seth Rollins. And he is going to, and he's going to demonstrate that in just the first fall. He won't need exhaustion to play a factor. He won't need pain to play a factor. He won't need bloodshed. He won't need weapons. He'll just need his wrestling ability to prove that he is the better competitor. And so, that's it. That is all I need to say on the matter. We know Seth Rollins is the better wrestler. We know he's the better competitor. He's going to prove it when this gets underway. When that three stages of hell match begins, Rollins will out-wrestle DDP to guarantee fall number one. And then here tonight, he's going to win fall number two. Next week, he'll win fall number three. But he won't need. He won't need to announce that. That's just there as a fail-safe for if the worst of the worst happens. If if Diamond Dallas Page takes a page out of Alexa Bliss's book and tries to poison Seth Rollins before the match. That is the extent of failsafe that it is. Because it's not going to be needed. Rollins is going to walk through this two to nothing with no problems whatsoever. This is going to be a field day for Seth Rollins and he's going to be able to do it in Brooklyn at the biggest fight of the summer. Just you wait and see. But we're going to kick things off right now with a man who is preparing for his penultimate 
ECW matchup, and I love it. I, I absolutely adore saying that sentence. I've said it three times tonight, and I'm still not sick and tired of it. Diamond Dallas Page is, without a doubt, the bane of my existence. The reason why ECW is not walking away with the views week in and week out. It's not getting the big ratings that it used to. And it's all Diamond Dallas Page's fault. DDP had to go win back that ECW title. DDP had to fight for a title that he technically should have never had. DDP then had to go to the extent to get it vacated from him. And thus, spoil the ratings. This is all the work of one man. The downfall of ECW to promote Diamond Dallas Page. It is a message that I have said loud and clear ever since Rollins returned at the Royal Rumble and still people don't believe my words. Still people think I'm a liar. People think it's DDP versus the authority and everyone should be on DDP's side. No, DDP stands alone, he walks alone and he is alone. But Diamond Dallas Page in his mind believes that everyone should be on his side. Everyone should be supporting him and clamoring to his claims, because he is the all-truthful one. DDP, that is just not the case, plain and simple. I'll tell you something that I forgot to do, is uh, start the stopwatch. Just realized I forgot to do that, and I have absolutely no idea currently what the time is. Oh dear, that's not a good one. All right, I've just had one of the one of the lovely assistants at ECW let me know that the, they had the stopwatch running. And I'm getting the feed through now. We are at 1 minute 20 in this match. There we go. Problem, uh, problem solved on that one. Anyway, as we focus back on this matchup, I would love to talk about the match card, but this match, too serious to discuss such a matter. So uh, we'll have to leave that for another time. We focus back on the match here. Jericho who has, I'm sure, played into DDP's favours, been in DDP's pocket at some point down the line. Wouldn't surprise me if he was, and he's going to do whatever it takes to protect DDP and look after DDP here tonight. Wouldn't be surprised if Page is able to win because he has a time advantage, because his match is significantly slower and significantly easier to negotiate than Seth Rollins. Hmm. I mean... You know, we all know the Four Horsemen loves Paige, I would assume. I, I don't really know and I don't really care, but... Jericho, I'm sure, has taken the fall. In fact, Jericho has taken the fall. He gave up his spot in the number one contenders match before Heat Wave so DDP could fill in. He's looking, and I wouldn't be surprised if Paige wins in sub-five minutes because Jericho's got his back. Jericho's looking out for him. Knew I should have gone with Corbin. Knew it. Shouldn't have listened to Jericho saying I can give him a good match. Mm. My ignorance should have taken shape at that moment, but no. I decided that Rollins and... Uh, wow. Well, anything with Rollins is a good idea, but I decided that Jericho and Paige would be a good idea. Look at Jericho go. He's missing everything. Paige now into the diamond bomb. And I wouldn't be surprised at three minutes five if this was put to rest. There's one. There's two. And oh, no, he kicks out. My goodness. Who would have thought he had that in him when Diamond Dallas Page is in the ring? Ooh. Page wasting his time there by taunting. There's no reason for him to need to catch his breath. He's basically in control of this match. Surprise, surprise. Going to go for the diamond cutter here on Chris Jericho, who is having none of it. Jericho counters out there. Kick to the gut now. DDT, and down goes DDP. Jericho. Oh, my God, do it. Do it, Jericho. Maybe he isn't playing as easy as I thought. Maybe he is going to make life hard for him. If DDP taps out, Rollins just needs to win. Later on tonight, but no. Page flips his way out. Got it a bit lucky there. It's a good thing, by the way, of course, just in case you forgot uh, from last week, or in case you didn't know, they're doing a, a best, of, they're doing beat the clocks to determine who gets to call the matches for SummerSlam and the three stages of hell, loser leaves the ECW stipulation, Rollins won last week, blah, 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 and of course, just in case you're wondering, no, there will be no altercation between uh, Diamond Dallas Page and Seth Rollins as they have both signed a non-contact agreement. 
to make sure that there is no bias or no, you know, no screw overs on the road to SummerSlam by both men. Elbow drop there by Jericho as we're about to hit five minutes now. Can Jericho put away Page though with this elbow? No, he can't. Jericho though over these last few minutes if he's proving something he is actually proving that he's not here to help Paige He's here to get a win. He's here to get his name in the spotlight and perhaps first shot At whoever walks out of SummerSlam the winner and by whoever walks out. I mean Seth Rollins Paige though tilt to Will Harakarana and down goes Jericho Into the cover we go now here we go There's one but Jericho still showing that he's got a lot of fight left in him as he kicks out very early on Oh, what a kick there. That'll send him down for good measure. Page off the ropes, but it's countered by Jericho. And Jericho sends him down now. Jericho going to look for the walls. He's tried the Lion Tamer. That couldn't get a submission. Will the walls of Jericho be enough, though? Great position for Jericho as well. Dead center, middle of the ring. Very little for DDP to get to. Long way for him to crawl as well, but it's not to be. That is a uh, DDP forcing his way out of that one but now slowing the pace down which goes to show how stupid Diamond Dallas Page is why slow the pace down when uh, when you're in a beat the clock match I and mean, you lost last week so surely you don't want to slow the pace down surely you just want to go all out on this one Page trying to wrench on the neck once more trying to slow down the pace again not exactly doing him any favors, but there's Jericho getting his way out of it. Irish whip off the ropes comes Page, but he's quick to counter. Jawbreaker there. Diamond Dallas Page now with an opening, maybe. And he's going to take full advantage of it. Page, Diamond Bomb. Referee, do you want to take any longer? One, two, and no. Jericho kicks out at two. He's keeping this one alive, and Page is putting his arms up in the air. He might indeed be signaling for it. Oh, and he might be signaling for it in a big way, but it's a way that wastes more time. It's a way that wastes precious seconds. Diamond Cutter! And perhaps the penultimate Diamond Cutter to be hit on ECW has just arrived. And maybe DDP's final victory could be on its way with one, two, and three. Page wins in seven minutes, 14 seconds to kick us off on ECW. Is that a time that Seth Rollins can beat? Well, considering he did it in some five minutes last week, my money's got... Yes. Yes, he can. Page, though can celebrate this victory all he wants. Celebrate your penultimate victory, Page, and take it in while you still can. Because clearly, you've not got long around here left to raise those arms in the air and celebrate with those blind enough to give in to your words, blind enough to believe your lies, and blind and, and too blind to see the truth. The end is nigh, though, and that's all that matters. Page's end is nigh. Diamond Dallas Page, enjoy your time. Your days certainly are numbered. Anyway, we're going to move on to our next matchup. Now, Cruiserweight match is going to be... A man who's been picking up victory after victory. Uh, Tony Nese against the man who competed in Money in the Bank, Trevor Lee. Page is probably going to walk backstage now and boast about his victory... Yell out of the top of his lungs, I beat Chris Jericho. Congratulations, you beat a man who's never held a singles championship in this universe. Boy, I bet you're proud. Well done, Paige. Just wait for Rollins to beat your time next week. Next week? Later on tonight. Just like he did last week, just like you'll do next week. Nothing to worry about at all. Anyway, coming towards the ring here, the premier athlete, Tony Nese, who has been on a roll recently. Nice picking up wins over Rich Swan and Apollo Crews on his quest to become the number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship and to take on the King of the Cruiserweights, Neville. However, here tonight, he's got to go up against a man who, of course, competed in Money in the Bank and has actually needed quite some time to recover from the number of bumps he took at Money in the Bank. 
As of course, as you know, I'm on about Trevor Lee. So here we go. Here he comes now. He really kind of uh, put his name out on the map when he picked up that victory to go into the Money in the Bank. And then at Money in the Bank, he was front and center, really, falling off of everything that he possibly could. And yeah, he did a great job of that. Trevor Lee now, though, here to compete tonight. One-on-one -on -one action against Tony Nice. Can he put a dent in Nice's momentum? Can he show that maybe he should be next in line for the Cruiserweight Championship? Of course, there is still questions surrounding where's the former Cruiserweight Champion? Where is suicide around these times? While the Cruiserweight Championship may not be getting defended at SummerSlam, there is still the chance for him to show up and get a rematch. For that cruiserweight title, he was a long enough cruiserweight champion and his reign was strong enough as well that he could get a rematch should he should he choose to do so. If he has decided not to, then that is his own decision, I suppose. He is uh, lingering in the dark as suicide has been known to do in the past, then let him do so. His rematch shall be waiting. As I get this match underway, I'll talk about the other two matches coming up here tonight. It's going to be a very interesting one uh, for us here. Uh, coming up after this, we're going to have a tag team matchup whereby it is going to be Benoit and Malenko taking on the team of Shawn Michaels and AJ Styles. While, ben Mar by, uh, while Benoit and Malenko may have picked up a victory two weeks ago and should technically be on their way to that tag team title opportunity, potentially... Shawn Michaels and AJ Styles want to show that they can uh, they can launch an attack for those titles once again. I have decided after having a week to think everything through and despite not being best impressed by their performances last week, I am going to say that the winner of this match next week will face DIY to determine the number one contenders for those, for those tag team titles. While I may not have been impressed by DIY's performance, um, at the end of the day they have picked up far more wins as a tag team than ben, ben, uh, Benoit and Malenko and Styles and Michaels. So with that being said, you've got to take the, you've got to take the long road there. You've got to look at the momentum they have picked up over time. And that has certainly gone uh, a very strong way for, um, for DIY. So they get a week off here, whereas Benoit, Malenko, Styles and Michaels, they will fight to take on DIY next week, where of course... The winner will get that opportunity at the Wyatt family. Speaking of the Wyatt family, the ECW television champion Dean Ambrose later on tonight will be going one-on-one -on -one with one half of the tag team champions, Bray Wyatt. After attacking Alistair Black last week following his victory over Neville and demanding that he wanted that match at SummerSlam, he wanted to put on his, tele his television championship up for grabs. It was decided, it was concluded, and it was allowed. And of course, I, well, I basically said it on the spot that the title would be on the line. And now with Ambrose and Black scheduled to go up against each other, Ambrose wants momentum, Ambrose wants to pick up victories, and he's going to do it by taking on a former television champion in Bray Wyatt. So we'll see what's going to happen. And of course, our main event, Roddy Strong, Seth Rollins. Rollins about to go 2-0 up in this Beat the Clock Challenge. Focusing back on this matchup right now. It's been kind of back and forth, but Nice has been putting in a lot of offense and is just going to show how well these last few weeks have gone for Nice. These repeated victories for the premier athlete. Always giving him the success he needs to potentially become the next man to challenge for Neville's title. The win here could certainly secure that one. And that's the move that finished off Hideo Otami last week. Kind of finish off Trevor Lee here tonight. Well, it's a bit of a turn in the favor. Lee shouted in his face earlier. And uh, Tony Nice will want to, wants to do the same, it seems. Tony Nice now with him up on his shoulders. Feynman's carry cut. Uh, Trevor Lee perhaps he needed an extra week off after uh, Money in the Bank because he's clearly not doing the best right now. Still struggling to get a lot of offense here. Nice into the cover off of that elbow drop. Is this victory? Definitely not. But look at Tony Nice stays on the offense, doesn't allow a moment for Lee to try and get back in this match until he accidentally gives him said opportunity. Powerbomb there by Trevor Lee. Uh-oh, here comes the strength now of Lee. Has Nice in position. Deadlift German. Suplex. 
We've seen the Cruiserweight Champion do it before. We've seen the former Cruiserweight Champion, Akira Tozawa, do it before. Trevor Lee adding his name to the list. And now Lee with him up in the air. Oh, suplex powerbomb by Trevor Lee. I haven't seen that since the days of Michael Bennett. And the cover with one, two, and three. Tony Nice has been defeated. Trevor Lee brings the winning streak of the premier athlete to an almighty end with an almighty maneuver. Bounce back from money in the bank there, clearly a learning message. Or learning moment, whatever you want to say. I don't know, I'm, I kind of messed that one up. A, 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 a moment to learn in for Trevor Lee and boy has he learned from it. Victory there over Tony Nice, but Nice's performance still impressive. Maybe, just maybe, there may need to be a return match between these two men to determine who fights Neville. I'll have to think about it. Anyway, let's move on to our next contest, tag team match. Who will face DIY next week for the right to become number one contenders for the ECW tag team titles? Will it be Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko? Or will it be AJ Styles and Shawn Michaels? Four incredible wrestlers, but only one victory is on its way. Let's see who it is up next. Well, you got to think, you, you look at the, the teams that are challenging right now for the uh, for the right to become number one contenders for the ECW Tag Team titles, and there are six incredible wrestlers. I would say so. Benoit, Malenko, Styles, Michaels, Ciampa, Gargano. All six of those men in their own right, incredible wrestlers, but you look at that one thing that nearly all of them are lacking, and that is the size and the strength. That's two things I know. I contradicted myself. But they are lacking the size and the strength to compete with the likes of Braun Strowman. Bray Wyatt, yeah. I mean, Benoit could probably take him. Gargano and Ciampa could take him, definitely. Styles could take him. Michaels could take him. Malenko, you know, maybe he might have a little bit of difficulty because of his mat wrestling and, you know, he needs a, a big reliance upon that, but then again, he is the man of a thousand holds, so maybe he wouldn't need such difficulty. But Braun, that's a whole different ball game. That is something that, as we saw, even the authors of Pain couldn't keep down. So you know how serious of a threat Braun Strowman is. But uh, it's not Braun Strowman we think about. It's not Bray Wyatt. It's not the Wyatt family we focus on. We focus on Bray Wyatt up next. But right now, we focus on AJ Styles. We focus on Shawn Michaels. We focus on Benoit and Malenko. The phenomenal one who makes his way towards the ring. Styles just needing a tag team title to become a Grand Slam champion within this universe. And the longer it goes on and the more you look at it, the more you think that it could be a sooner rather than later situation. But then again, it could also be a never situation if Braun Strowman has anything to say about it. So with that being said, is this, uh, is this all for nothing? Because of Braun Strowman? Maybe. But at the same time, I was about to say there's no harm in trying, but uh, there's certainly a lot of harm in trying when it comes to uh, when it comes to Braun Strowman. But anyway, I think we've talked about Braun Strowman a little bit too much right now. Let's move away from that. AJ Styles coming towards the ring, and well, he's in the ring, and he's entered the ring, and he's done actually all that stuff, so I don't know why I said that. Someone's coming towards the ring, though, and that's the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Michaels and Styles, of course, did contend in those beat-the-clock matches. Michaels was able to put up a tougher fight last week against Page, and maybe that'll say something about the team. Maybe it'll say that, you know, uh, um, Shawn Michaels is able to give it his all. He's able to give more than AJ Styles can. I'm, I'm not saying that's the case, but someone could allude to it being such, and um, there's, a, there's a possibility, there's a debate there to be set up, and it may also be lingering in the mind of AJ Styles. His performance last week. I know he was taking on the best wrestler in the world, so he could give him the benefit of the doubt in that occasion. But at the same time, we've seen Styles give away easier opportunities uh, before. I mean, in his hometown of Gainesville, Georgia, Styles lost 
to Bray Wyatt. So what does that say about the phenomenal one upon his return to ECW? The brand, of course, where he captured his one and only World Championship. Shawn Michaels, of course, also a former ECW champion. So you'd expect this team to do a little bit better, but then again, those are singles accomplishments. And I think as time has gone on, they've developed a better uh, contingency, a better friendship, and a better working relationship as a tag team as well. And of course, they're taking on a team of almost relative equal experience. Benoit and Malenko have not been seen around that much on ECW, so... They've got that going for them, but when we saw them two weeks ago picking up the win over the Dirty Heels, they did a very strong job in that one of keeping the former ECW Tag Team Champions contained and locked down. Will they try and do the same against, uh, against Michaels and Styles here tonight? Maybe so. It might be a little bit more difficult for them, though. We'll just have to wait and see. Michaels already tagged in. Quick tags. Uh, well, a quick tag already made by uh, the team of Styles and... Michaels, but there's the counter. Chris Benoit now going to work on Shawn Michaels. Has him down on the mat. What can he look to do here? He's looking to try and almost take out every limb of uh, Shawn Michaels, which will be, certainly be a way to stop the all-rounded offense, the high-flying offense, the technical offense. Certainly a very strong way of doing that. And now you want to talk about technical offense. The man of a thousand holes tagged in here. And Benoit using his more aggressive side of the move of the attack team. To send Malenko flying into him for that clothesline. Referee knock out of the cover for some reason. Alright, there we go. Now he goes into it. And that gave Michaels plenty of time to kick out early. Big drop kick in the back there. And now Michaels, oh, face first for Malenko. Got to think DIY, wherever they are, if they're backstage, I believe they are uh, just backstage. They've got to be learning, you know, they've got to be watching both teams and thinking, how do we stop uh, the offense of Benoit and Malenko? How do we make sure that Malenko doesn't keep our fast-paced offense shut down? How do we contend with Michaels and Styles? You know, how do we stop the, both their all-arounded offense? That is something they've got to take into consideration when watching this match. Tag made here. Styles now in. And a very nice double team maneuver there. Malenko goes down. And Styles goes into the cover here. Doesn't hook the leg. Just looking to wear out Malenko potentially. And he's able to do so there. Gets the two count. This matchup continues on. But Malenko had to exert a little bit more energy. Especially on a man who has a height and a weight advantage over him. You can see, though, both teams making an equal amount of tags thus far. Don't agree with what Dimalenko is doing here. I think he should follow the uh, respect that these men have for one another and get out the ring. Styles able to ban off that elbow. Oh, there's the forearm. And now the phenomenal blitz on its way. Styles with a flurry of maneuvers there. Quick strikes to send down Benoit. This matchup continues on. And great counter there by Chris Benoit in two. A single leg Boston Crab here. That one is looking pretty damn painful. But he's out of it. And away goes Benoit. Into, the, into his own corner here. And oh, just as he went to go into AJ Styles there. That sounded wrong. Just as Benoit, uh, Benoit was looking to run at AJ Styles. The tag was made. And now Michaels is the legal man. Smart move, maybe. Certainly a, uh, a a thoughtful one by the duo. Maybe a thoughtful one by uh, Shawn Michaels there, looking out for his tag team partner and preparing to take the fall for him. But with Benoit still in the ring and Michaels having some time to recover, this could play into their advantage. Flying forearm. We know that could be a precursor too, and he's going to look for it right here. Michaels up top. Elbow drop down on a Benoit. And now in trouble is the Crippler. Michaels tuning up the band for Sweet Chin. Music, no, Benoit ducks it. Benoit gets out of the way. Great uh, evasion there by Chris Benoit. Used his senses to his advantage and Malenko now can try and turn this into their 
kind of match. Kick out at two there by Michaels. He certainly wanted to use all of that count there to perhaps think up of a game plan. He's got to think on the fly now. A quick kick in the face there for Malenko. And speaking of quick, here's the quick tags again being demonstrated. No, it's not. All right, there's a great uh, way of stopping that by Malenko. And that's Michaels flurrying his way out of a Tiger suplex. Did a great job to get himself out of that one. Tag made now. AJ Styles back in. Going after the arm. And that's one of the smartest things you can afford to do against Di Malenko. Especially with his technical based offense. Styles flattens him face first there. Into the mat. Cover after it. But Malenko pushes him away. Quite a strong kick out to be fair. But staying on the offense now is the phenomenal one. Once more going after that arm it seems. Dropping him down on it. That is very, very thoughtful there by the phenomenal one and by Shawn Michaels. Slammed him down with relative ease and now here we go to the top rope. Goes AJ Styles. Oh, what a, what a spread-legged frog splash there. Got a bit of theatrics on that one. But the result is basically the same. It's a kick out of two and Malenko is really struggling now. AJ Styles has really come into his own since getting tagged in. And here we go now. Styles, Fireman's carry neck breaker. Uh-oh. This is not where Malenko will want to be. Styles calling him to his feet. Phenomenal forearm. Connects flash. And will it be Styles and Michaels meeting DIY next week? There's two. No. Malenko kicks out. Styles going on the apron again though. Misses the elbow drop and this could be his chance. No, great stop there. Great quick uh, evasion, but it was it was spoiled. I think he wanted to make the tag in to Michaels. He just didn't get a chance. Tiger Bomb now. There's an opening here. There's a very big opening for Benoit to get back in this matchup. Oh God, in the corner here now. Malenko. Repeated stomps into the into the gut of AJ Styles and Benoit tagging himself in now. This is hardly a methodical, technical approach. Quick tags in and out. We've seen the New Day do this before, but I didn't think we'd be seeing it from um, from these two. Oh God! Here we go. Benoit drop kick into the gut. Win or lose, AJ Styles is going to be feeling that one in the morning. And did I just see Dean Malenko do a jiggy? I think I did. Cover there, but it's a quick breakup. Michael's in to make the save, and he did a great job there thinking that one through as quick as he did. And Benoit is a mental. He is apps. He is a nut job. Headbutt at the turnbuckle there. Benoit gonna fly. Oh, he's gonna go for the headbutt, isn't he? He's gonna go for it. He nails it. Styles in even bigger trouble now. He gets up to his feet somehow. Rolls through, but I think Benoit's in the ropes. He is. But has that given him an opening? Yes, it has. Runs to the corner. Tags in Michaels. Now that is one incredibly smart move by the phenomenal one. And you can see he's hanging on there. He's feeling the effects of this one. And Michaels may just well be feeling the effects of that one for some time to come. German suplex, but he's up to his feet. Michaels now. Here we go. The heartbreak kid with offense once more. Slams him down on the mat. Oh, here we go. So, oh, there's the elbow drop by Michaels. He's not going to look to tune up the band this time. He's going to look to pull the trigger right away. Shawn Michaels. Sweet chin music. And it sticks. That is a tune Benoit may never forget, but Styles can't get in. Is this going to cause a problem? It will. Certainly for Michaels anyway. He took too long there. To go for that cover, but Malenko did not bother to break that one up. And I'm kind of surprised as to why. Maybe he knew he'd kick out. Benoit now. Sharpshooter turns it over. And Michaels, though, got that arm out to the ropes. What a match this has been. What a tag team match has been back and forth by both sides. Neither man, neither team giving in in this one. 
Michael's out of it and you can see that he's almost on his own here. Styles is still reeling in pain on the outside. But Shawn Michaels will not give in for his team. Will not give in for that opportunity. A DIY. Oh, he may sh Oh, maybe he should have. Capturing him in midair and locking in the cross face. Benoit thought he had this one put away, but he didn't. Malenko tried to stop Styles as well, but he didn't pay off. Roll up now. Roll up. The referee would focus. Referee should have been more intent on going straight to the cover than trying to get Malenko out of the ring. Even if Malenko would have probably broken that one up. This matchup continues on here. There's almost two on one handicap right now with no AJ Styles around. And finally, Benoit tags back out. Dean Malenko back in now, but how much more does the Iceman have to give? If anything, this has proved that Benoit and Malenko are a tag team to pay attention to. They can hang. They can go the distance. Styles back in finally. But it hasn't paid off that well. There's a counter. I, uh, I, <laughs> I did not expect to be seeing this level of action. I did not expect to be seeing this much back and forth right now. Malenko sends Styles reeling into the turnbuckle. Oh, but a big boot in the face there certainly caught him. But Malenko's able to counter out of that one as well. This is what I call true back and forth action. Dead set in the middle of the ring. It's the Tiger Bomb. Can it secure a huge win for Malenko? It can! I don't know why Michael stood so stationary. But it's a huge, huge win for Benoit and Malenko, who next week will go on to face off against DIY. Who will be the next tag team? Who will be the next number one contenders for the tag team titles? That is what we wait to find out. But my God, did both men give it their all in that one. What an entertaining tag team contest that was. I, I don't know why I said both men. I meant both teams. And I think the DIY and maybe even the Wyatt family have been put on notice by that performance. What a, uh, what a showing there. Clearly this is a team that could be on their way for tag team gold. Maybe I was wrong about Styles and Michaels. Maybe they still need to go back to the drawing board. Well, we'll see what's going to happen regarding that. But speaking of the Wyatt family, of course, up next, it is champion versus champion. ECW television champion Dean Ambrose versus one half of the ECW tag team champions, Bray Wyatt. So with that being set, with that being decided, next week is going to be a very interesting tag team match once more. But right now we focus on this one. Dean Ambrose coming towards the ring, the ECW television champion who will do battle, of course, at SummerSlam with the Wyatt family's Alistair Black. But tonight, it is all about Bray Wyatt. It is all about the former ECW television champion that he's got to focus on ahead of SummerSlam, ahead of that meeting with Alistair Black. Dean Ambrose asked for a tough opponent and certainly seems he's got one. In the way of Bray Wyatt, just because he holds a tag team title does not mean he should be overlooked by any stretch of the imagination. Still a tough competitor as per always. And he's always just got to look out for him. You never know what Bray Wyatt can pull out of the bag. A fire flies out in Baton Rouge for that. <laughs> it's back to an old trick. It is back to an old trick of the Wyatt family. Because that is not Bray Wyatt. That is the other half of the ECW Tag Team Champions. That is Braun Strowman. The still undefeated Braun Strowman. The monster among men, Braun Strowman. 
Oh my goodness. What? What has Dean Ambrose got himself into? He wanted to do battle with Alistair Black. He proved, he wanted to say that you don't start a fight with Dean Ambrose and expect to win. Well, now I'm going to wonder if Dean Ambrose is even going to be able to get to the end of that fight because he has got a face-off right here, right now, with the monster among men. We haven't seen this move played in a while. This card trick. But here, now... Oh, boy. Braun Strowman for the first time in a while in singles action. One of the last times may have been was that incredible matchup at, at uh, one night stand against Samoa Joe. And you can see the look on Ambrose's face. The lunatic may always be ready to go to battle, but he has got to be worried a little bit about this one. Braun Strowman stands across him, but that is not going to stop Ambrose, the lunatic, exploding away here early on. on Bra oh my god, on Braun Strowman. Can Ambrose get something going here? Can Ambrose try and do the unthinkable? Oh, well. Oh, my God. Well, he certainly gave it a crack, didn't he? Here goes Braun Strowman now. Big punch in the face and down falls Dean Ambrose. The big question, of course, when it comes to a, a Braun Strowman match is never if, but when. When will Strowman claim another victory? When will this match end? But another one to ask is what? And what will be the condition of Dean Ambrose after this one? The lunatic, he loves to fight. And he is going to, he might even cherish this fight against Braun Strowman. Well, he's certainly looking to give it his all right now. Russian leg sweep, Strowman goes down. And Dean Ambrose is going to hit up the top rope here. Diving fish drop there onto Strowman and he jumps into the cover here. Can Braun Strowman... Never mind. Not even going to bother like I tried to say anything in that one. Just just, just move on. Just gloss over that. But look at how Ambrose is always prepared to give the fight here to Braun Strowman. Always wanting to try and stand up to him. There's a variation of a backbreaker. They look like he was more on the ribs. Oh, God, here comes the strength of Braun Strowman with ease. He lifts him up for a deadlift gut wrench. You done it now, haven't you, Ambrose? You may have gone You may have gone and picked a fight that you cannot win. Alistair Black started this fight, but Braun Strowman may look to finish it here in Louisiana. Oh, God! Dean Ambrose almost propelled into the announce table, baby. But Ambrose will not give in. And I don't know why, and I don't know how he's able to do this. And it might not have been his smartest idea either. Back in the ring, he is basically thrown back in the ring by Strowman. And oh, Ambrose is going to feel all of that one. Strowman's going to feel nothing. He's going to work on the head, but which one will it be? Hey, here we go. 400 pounds about to land on you for a power slam. Braun Strowman style. Cover after it with one, two, three. Strowman just walked over Ambrose with ease. And there once more is yet more problems heading into SummerSlam for Dean Ambrose. He wanted to pick this fight, and he's got it. But now is Braun Strowman, Bray Wyatt, and more, important, and more importantly is Alistair Black destined to end it. Well, I don't know where you came from, but uh, hello Bray Wyatt, I guess. And Wyatt speaking in his, in his mystical ways, his, his ways that are difficult to read through, but I guess getting the basic grasp of it. It is just rubbing in that loss to Dean Ambrose and rubbing in his eventual defeat at SummerSlam. And on top of that, Bray Wyatt is talking about DIY, talking about Benoit and Malenko, how everyone compared to them is irrelevant. SummerSlam will be the night for 
uh, Alistair Black and ECW will be the stomping grounds for the Wyatt family. And there's the ominous warning. Run. Well, no matter which way you look at it, you gotta think that Dean Ambrose is in big trouble. Big trouble. Ahead of SummerSlam. Braun Strowman has already had his way with him. And he's still got Alistair Black to get his hands on. He's still got Alistair Black to deal with. Something tells me that that next week and even and, and certainly SummerSlam will not be a night to remember for the Lunatic Fringe or some nights to remember rather I should say but right now we move away from that and focus on the Beat the Clock Challenge round two will Seth Rollins beat that time of 7 minutes 14 and be able to choose fall number two and of course the fall that will win him the third ECW Championship and rid ECW of Diamond Dallas Page once and for all? I think so. Roddy Strong, do me wrong. Strong competitor. No pun intended, but a, uh, you know, a, a talented athlete. But compared to Seth Rollins? Eh -eh. Not on the same level. No one is on the same level. Not even Bobby Fish is on the level that Seth Rollins has obtained. And here he is, a man just a week and a half away from making history. We have waited, we waited to see if there would be a first ever two-time ECW champion. Seth Rollins did it. Now we wait to see if there'll ever be a, th a first time, three-time ECW champion. Spoilers, what will I be saying two weeks from now? Seth Rollins did it. Who will be the person who will save ECW from its demise, save ECW from certain doom, and rise it from the ashes? Spoilers, I'll be saying Seth Rollins did it. Rollins cannot be stopped. There is no man walking the earth who can prevent Seth Rollins from making history. There is no man stopping Diamond Dallas Page except Seth Rollins. And Rollins ultimately will be the one that will stop Page once and for all and send him away. Cleanse ECW, rid it of its cancer, and move on to bigger and better moments, bigger and better times for a brand that has been waiting to be saved by the likes of Seth Rollins even before the NWO, well, even when the NWO walked into town because before the NWO there was Seth Rollins and did he save ECW? you're goddamn right he did focusing back on this matchup now of course as I said Rollins has a time of 7 minutes 14 to beat in order to secure Fall number two. Rollins, of course, as he said earlier in the night, decided to pick the uh, <clears throat> the singles match, a basic one-on-one -on -one match with all the rules, pinfalls, submissions, countouts, disqualifications, all in tow in that one. However, here tonight, Rollins, if he wins this one, will he pick a little bit more of a different matchup? Maybe so. Rollins went for a, a Phoenix Splash there with a transition in midair and just didn't get it, but continuing on the... But uh, now... On the offense, goes Roddy Strong. Finally getting a little bit going in this matchup, and he needs to do just that against Rollins. If he wants to stick his name out there, if he wants to prove that Roddy Strong, after SummerSlam, could be someone who can stake a claim for a title. He's not going to beat Rollins, but a strong performance, no pun intended, would certainly help towards that. And look at Rollins' frustration, he's demanding that Strong gets up to his feet right now. And Roddy getting up to his feet in his own accord and using his feet to nail Rollins in the head there. But Rollins pulls out the reversal and a discus forearm. That'll send him down. Here goes Seth Rollins. No, he doesn't. Roddy Strong once more able to pull out the reversal. What will he look for now? Uh-oh. Double underhook. Backbreaker. 
New Orleans is going to be feeling that one, I think. The master of the backbreaker, as he's been known as. Putting that name to good effect. And he will focus on that back as well during this matchup. But look at how Rollins is so quick to counter everything. So snappy to pull out his reversals. Into the, uh, oh, into the turnbuckle there went Seth Rollins. But he's quick to counter. And look at that one. Drilled him in the face there. Rollins once more telling him to get up to his feet. But it's stronger gets out of the ring. We're at uh, almost three minutes right now. And... Seth Rollins, if you ask me, is not doing the greatest job right now. He's still got more than half his time remaining, sure, but Roddy Strong is a very, very tough competitor. He is not going to be easy to walk over, of course. And I'm sure this time last week he was doing a much better job against AJ Styles. In fact, I'm pretty sure he had already nailed a curb stomp at this point. This time around, just not working out. Elbow there in the gut by, uh, by Roddy Strong. And now Roddy has Rollins up. Oh my god, this has backfired. This has backfired ultimately for Seth Rollins. Roddy Strong in position. Nails the drop kick. Rollins, no. Rollins, don't. Don't make me worry, Seth. Just, just kick out. That's all you need to do. And he does. We're fine. We're fine. Whew. We are fine. Roddy now. Looking to continue his offense here as Rollins up against the ropes. Uh-oh, Rollins in for more pain on his back. Courtesy of Roddy Strong. And once more, this double unhook backbreaker will come out to play. No, it won't. What a reversal by Seth Rollins. That's what I expect to see by the future three-time ECW champion. Rollins now at 420. Nice. And here goes Rollins, schoolboy roll up Avara Kedavra. On the money and a standing shooting star press. Just to show how great of a competitor he is to go along with it. Rollins into the cover, there's one. And oh, Roddy. <clears throat> Excuse me, I went through puberty in one second. There, Roddy showing his strength there. Kicking out early on. Rollins now though. Will he go for curb stomp? Is he going to go for it? Oh my god, he's been caught. Roddy playing out of DDP's textbook there. How did Roddy Strong pull that one off? I won't know. But Rollins could be in trouble right now. No, he's looking good. Falcon Arrow countered by Strong. Strong rolls him up. Strong rolls up Seth Rollins with a cover here by Strong. There's two. Oh, Rollins kicked out late. Rollins, come on, you got two minutes remaining. You got two minutes left to get the win here. And that's exactly what he's going for. Into the roll up now. But no, Strong still kicks out. <laughs> All right. Great. You're not, you're not going to be able to get the win if you've taken out the referee. Rollins, why you do this to me? Why do you put me through this? Strong going into the cover. Oh, he didn't even get a one count. I'm looking at this clock right now, though, and there is only one, well, less, just over one minute remaining right now for Seth Rollins to put Roddy Strong away. Downward spiral there, and Strong's busted open as a result of it. That could put him away. That could seal the deal into the cover here. Not wow. I don't know what Roddy Strong is made of, but he's certainly proving that he has a whole load of fight in him, no matter the situation. Roddy sends Rollins back there. Rollins, you've got less than, you've got 40 seconds remaining or thereabouts. Please wrap this one up. Seal the deal. He's gonna send him into the turnbuckle here. Don't take too long, Seth. Roddy gets the counter off. But still, whatever Roddy's looking for there, he cannot get. Rollins, though, feeling the effects of something. Oh, he played played possum. Kick in the gut. If you're going to hit a curb stomp, hit it now. You've got very little time remaining. Oh, there's a running knee. There's about 10 seconds remaining. Come on. Come on. Seth, please. I'm begging you. No, Rollins, you're going to lose. Rollins with two, one. Oh. 
The second fall officially goes to Diamond Dallas Page. I know Roddy Strong just kicked out of all that with a bloody face. They're basically a zero count, but I'm uh, I'm not in the best of moods right now to see that. Seven minutes 34 and rising right now. Phoenix splash by Rollins. Strong is still up to his feet though. Strong with a roll up. Oh, don't make matters worse. He's already suffered a loss on the clock. Don't make him suffer a loss. Oh, I thought he was going to do it. Well, with nothing to play for now with the second fall or with the second fall going to be decided by DDP. What matters now is Seth Rollins is able to pick up this win here over Roddy Strong. What matters here is, well, he's already busted open, so I would assume he sent a, a strong enough message. To put this one to bed. Rollins looking for something. Strong counters. What this has proven is just... The credibility of Roddy Strong, really. How he's able to take so much and continue fighting on. Strong with a Tiger Bomb there. But what is Strong looking for? Rollins gives up his back to Strong, but it's only temporary. There's the counter by Rollins once more. From behind. Oh, there's an evasion. That's a dodge if I've ever seen one. Rollins now finally gives up his back. Crucifix roll up by Strong. No, don't. There's one. There's two. Roddy Strong very nearly beats Seth Rollins. The roll up method is working in the favor of Roddy Strong right now. Ducks under the punch and he rolls him up again. Trying to make matters worse for Rollins. But he's done it. Roddy Strong just pinned Seth Rollins. Oh, God. And look at the dejection there. Look at the state of Rollins. He is not one bit pleased about what transpired. And Roddy Strong, with a cleared face and even a cleared mind, has the opportunity to celebrate this victory right here. Not only, though, has he helped Diamond Dallas Page secure fall number two, he may have put doubt in the mind of the man who is destined to save ECW. Is this a time of worry for Seth Rollins? Is this a time of doubt for Seth Rollins? I sure hope not because we need Rollins at SummerSlam to be at his peak. We need him to be a 100%. We need him to be the Seth Rollins that is going to redesign, rebuild, and reclaim ECW. Rollins, get your head together. Get your, get your act together. Get back in the game. What happened here tonight was a fluke. Roddy can take this victory all he wants, and it's a huge win for him. But Rollins, we need you to focus on Paige. We need you to save ECW.